Here we are with the second F MFA graduates of Saatchi, who will soon, in a few seconds, become graduates. You will soon become graduates. And that is not a small thing. I know that you've paid a large price in time, in energy, in self-examination, and I can't thank the prior speaker for underlining what the role of the artist is and should be. It corresponds totally with what I've been saying for many, many years. And um, to just make a version of what someone else has done is not what art is about. It's about finding yourself visually and being genuine. This is a truly inspiring moment for you, especially for this old man, I'm almost 83, who started the school back in 1975. That's 41 years ago. And it seems incredible that in 41 years we come to here. Over the years, I mean, the school started in 75 with just a few people helping. It was me. And then a lot of people no longer here. Jim Hogue, who was an artist. Julian Tilbury. Bishop Edward Lee of the American Church in Florence. Clay Hubs, already gone. And many, many others. And they shared the dream of making some place that was not just another program not just another vacation where you did some art and looked at some art, but a place where serious students of the arts and related subjects like art history could confront the reality of the past and see it as a challenge, not a sop, not some sort of a formula, but use it to generate ideas that were original a place where they could challenge themselves. It's not about feeling comfortable. It's really about feeling not sure, but working very hard to come to some sort of certainty. Steve also uh, took a little bit of steam out of my speech when he talked about that transition period. The school was considered an overseas art program like many others. We started out from day one as not being a business, of being a US 501c3, which means you, you're not for profit. And that not for profit meant that we eventually started having some savings, which we gave out in scholarships. But when Mary Beckinsale came in as dean, 20, how many years? 30 years ago, time flies and worked very hard to develop new areas of study, new areas of study for any Florentine program. She was the first person who insisted and thought it was significant that art history being taught at American programs went beyond the Baroque. She started teaching modern and contemporary art history, uncovering back then, which was still relatively unknown in the States, the Macchioli, these great Florentine painters who were outside painting from nature before the Impressionists. Sorry. <laughs> and indeed, I'm sure that you, all of you who have been here, know about them. There's a lot of their work in the Museum of the, uh, of the 1500, of the, what is it called? Of the Cinque? Novecento. Novecento. It was one of those centuries. And Mary also introduced and felt that as a art historian, there was another thing that people who were interested in the visual arts want to know is how were old paintings made? Not only that, how do you save them? And we had the fortunate connection with a very great conservator, Roberto Lapucci, and we built the first really important serious program of conservation, art conservation. And I think that, uh, frankly, every serious painter certainly should find out about it. And she also started the fresco course. She also started an outreaching to the Italian society by creating an onlus where we work with Italian 
young people and not so young people, uh, Downs children, other kinds of uh, people with issues, bringing in groups of high school students, do a two-week ph photography sh workshop free, and giving back to Italy. This is something that was instilled by her. And not only that, the, the idea of restoring works of art all over the city, in the hospitals, in the churches, on the walls, on the streets, something that no other school had done till then. She then also said, in order to make this a permanent institution, we had to stop renting space. And our board has to invest in bricks and mortar. In other words, have a place that was the institution physically, not just a concept. And she located first the Palazzo dei Cartoloni, which you all know, and then later the, Piat the Palazzo on Via Sant'Egidio, which the trustees uh, amusingly named after me, which was funny, but I don't know whether it was sarcastic or sincere. In any case, as I said then, my mother would have loved it. And now I have to say something about the new president, who's only revealed a little bit about himself. When he was a student, he was a Sacco great draftsman. He drew from the nude. He painted in an incredibly expressive way. Steve Britton is a very good artist. If he never became a successful architect, if he hadn't gone to Harvard and done the graduate school design, I'm certain he would have had a pretty good career as just a painter, really. That, we were lucky enough to bring him back into the fold as a member of the Board of Trustees, and now, as president, um, allows me to feel that the school is in great hands, that all of you, all of the future uh, students in the school, will benefit from a, a, a really rich and complete experience. Thank you, Steve.